Good evening, gentlemen. You're about to witness a ceremony that is very sacred and very somber. I would ask everyone to turn off all radios, all beepers, all cell phones. I would ask that you pay strict attention to this. There will be several things going on. Thank you. <laughs> 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. A group of service men and women stand to honor all veterans and the veterans known only to God. They stand guard over the tomb of the unknown at Arlington National Cemetery. The tomb has been patrolled continuously since 1930. They march in front of the tomb. They do this in all kinds of weather. When they were asked why they do this, their answer was very simple. The men and women we are honoring deserve it and have earned it. A few questions that people have about the guard. How many steps do they take? They take 21 steps in front of the tomb. That's the equivalent to a 21 gun salute. The highest honor that you can give a military or foreign dignitary. How long do they turn and face the tomb? 21 seconds, for the same reason as the first. The guard's gloves are wet, so they don't drop their rifle. What shoulder does the guard carry his gun on? It is always the shoulder away from the tomb. How often is the guard changed? Every 30 minutes. There are some physical traits for the guard. For a person to apply for a tomb guard, he or she must be five foot 10 or six two. Their waist size must be 30 inches. There are some different requirements for our women tomb guards. The guard must commit two years of his life to the tomb. Live in the barracks under the tomb. He cannot drink alcohol on or off duty for the rest of his life. After two years, the guard will receive their wreath pin, which is worn on the lapel signifying their service to the guard and the tomb. There are only 400 pins in existence today. The guard must obey these rules for the rest of their life or give up their tomb pin. Their shoes are specially made with six so thick soles to protect them from the heat and the cold. They have metal plates on them that extend out more than normal, so it makes a loud click when they halt. There are no wrinkles, folds, or lint on their uniform. The guard dress for duty in front of a full length mirror. They wear wool because that is the material that will hold a crease. Their pants and belt buckle are worn two sizes smaller so they can maintain their posture. After six months of duty, the guard cannot, excuse me, for six months of duty, the guard cannot talk to anyone nor watch TV all along, they are studying the 175 notable people, notable people laid to rest at Arlington. The guard must memorize all of these that are interred there. Among the notables are President Taft, Joe Lewis, the boxer, Medal of Honor winner, Audie Murphy, the most decorated soldier of World War II, 
And the most recent that we like to talk about in West Virginia is Mr. Francis Woodruff Buckles, a West Virginian, the oldest at the time living American World War I veteran. The tomb guard spends five hours getting ready to walk his post. Some of the things about the tomb that you might not know. On the north and south face of the tomb, you will see six wreaths inverted. These wreaths stand for battles from World War I. On the face of the tomb, you will find three figures carved in marble. This is the face most visitors of the tomb do not see. The three figures from left to right represent peace, valor, excuse me, peace, victory, and valor. Peace on the left is holding a dove in her left hand while holding the right hand to victory. Valor on the right is holding a broken sword in his hand and facing victory. Victory in the middle is holding the hand of peace, extending an olive branch towards valor. This symbol of devotion and sacrifice, this symbolizes devotion and sacrifice and the courage of the men there. On the west face of the tomb, which is facing the plaza, which most people see is inscribed, here rest in honored glory an American soldier known but to God. Behind it, in the rotunda, there is a prayer that says, Eternal rest grant them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. In 2003, Hurricane Isabel hit Washington, D.C. The U.S. Senate and the House took two days off in anticipation of the storm. On ABC News, it was reported that because of the danger of the hurricane, the military members assigned to the old guard could suspend their duties. They respectfully declined. Actually, they said, no way, sir. Soaked to the skin, marching in pelting tropical rainstorm, they still guarded the tomb was not just an assignment, they said. It is the highest honor that we can afford our service personnel. Again, the tomb is patrolled 24-7, 365 days a year since 1930. You can see it takes a special person who believes and loves their country so much that nothing else matters. It takes an individual who is willing to give up personal pleasure, honor, and they honor the brave men and women who have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. A special breed of America, American is what it takes to do this job. A couple things to remember, 24-7, 365, no TV for six months, and I would think that would include computer, iPod, and cell phones as well. Special breed of America. Now you've noticed, as we've been standing here, your American Legion Mountaineer Boys State Honor Guard has been guarding the tomb. What we're going to do now is honor the tomb by having some wreaths placed on the tomb. I would ask the governor and the secretary of state to place a wreath for the American Legion.
would now ask the Speaker of the House and the President of the Senate to present a wreath for the state of West Virginia. I would now ask the Adjutant General and his Colonel to present one for MIA and POWs. Thank you, gentlemen. We will now honor our, all of our departed by a rifle salute. You may be seated, gentlemen. Now, if you notice, in back of our tomb, we have the American Legion Mountaineer Boys State National Cemetery. You notice there are crosses all across the back. Each cross depicts 1,000 West Virginians who perished in battle. World War II, excuse me, World War I, 1,820. World War II, 7,300, excuse me, 7,037. Korea, 1,388. Vietnam, 1,182. Beirut, five. The Gulf War, three. Panama, one. Iraq, two. Iraqi Freedom, 24. Operation Enduring Freedom, 13. That's a total of 11,400 and 75 West Virginians who died for our nation. That concludes our ceremony here today. We hope that you enjoyed it. We hope that you learned something. If you'd like, you could stick around here and watch the guard for a little bit longer. Remember, I mentioned that the guard will receive, after their training, 
a pin. Our tomb guards here will also receive their tomb guard pin. You may go to the assembly hall or watch here for a while of the guard. Thank you for your attention, gentlemen.